Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Unscripted and Unchained RPG Review. I am Game Master Bloodworth, and as you can see by the graphics, today's video I am going to be uh, going over Fallout RPGs Chapter 3 Character Creation. This is Episode 4 in a series of videos that I am uh, covering as I go through the core rulebook of Fallout, the RPG from uh, Modifius. Uh, so this is a 220 system, uh, 2D20 system, uh, if you haven't been following along already. And, um, and very apropos to today's events for me, uh, I am actually beginning session zero of my Fallout campaign. So my Fallout campaign is, uh, is Vault 67, uh, that is uh, located in Oneonta, New York. Uh, so it is my own homebrew setting. And uh, launching the campaign today with character creation uh, for those that uh, have not yet created their character. And then uh, we might actually get some play in today as well. That remains to be seen. We'll see how long it takes everyone to get acclimated to character creation, getting their characters up on roll 20. And then uh, a brief discussion about the, the general game rules, the very basic game rules, and then, um, like I said, we might get some game time uh, in today. I can only run about a two-hour session, two-and-a-half-hour session or so uh, today uh, because I have some family events to attend to, so um, we'll see how that all goes. Um, I'm also hoping that this doesn't take 24 hours to uh, post. I've been having some internet issues. Um, and very, very long upload times. I uh, should have a technician here tomorrow to see what the heck is going on with that. But um, if this does seem to be lagging very, very far behind, um, then I might just uh, recreate it as a live stream, which will go much, much faster. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's start taking a look at character creation for Fallout RPG. So here we go, and I will uh, expand the size of this so that you can see along as well. So there are the special attributes, then skills, derived statistics, perks, character advancement, character um, creating a character, then step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, and step six. So we'll see how far we get through in this video today. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, and let's go right into it. So um, special stands for uh, the the attributes of the uh, of the characters. So we have strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. All right. Uh, so luck is one that you're probably not very familiar with. Uh, luck describes how much fortune smiles down upon turning fickle forces in your favor and generally coming out on top. When should be, uh, you should be at the bottom. Luck gives you points to spend to add story details. Use your luck attribute when you make skill tests and re-roll dice. Uh, so rolling luck. Luck is not associated with any skills and it's used as a default attribute for any test. So it might seem like it's used for skill tests most of the time. It isn't used for skill tests most of the time. In truth, in any situation where success relies more on chance than ability, the GM may call for you to use your ruck, luck in place of another attribute. Similarly, you can use luck in place of another attribute by spending a luck point before you roll, obviously, this works better if your luck is high, higher than the attribute it replaces. Skills. So this is something that I would hand out to players um, as part of the um, as part of the pages that I like to give them, so that they know the very very basics of the game system. And the reason why I like to give this to my players is that 
they can easily categorize any, ca um, any action that they're thinking of taking into one of these areas, right? So um, if they're looking to do something that is uh, use it, utilizing their strength ability and it's not explicitly lifting, pushing, pulling, jumping, running, or, and swimming, but it might be something else, right? Then we can uh, then apply it to uh, making an athletic score uh, check rather than something else. So sometimes you might do something that doesn't necessarily list in here, um, but we can then determine which one would it best go into. Like I don't see, um, there's not climbing in athletics. Let's see if climbing falls someplace else. Um, no, so climbing would certainly fall within a lot athletics, even though it is not listed there. So let's continue on. Um, so you have these, you know, skills here of uh, athletics, barter, big guns, energy weapons, explosives, lockpick, medicine, melee weapons, pilot, repair, science, small guns. Sneak, speech, survival, throwing, and unarmed. Tag skills. A few of your skills are tag skills, marking them as area uh, as your areas of expertise. Tag skills represent focus training in those skills and a special affinity or talent with that discipline. Tag skills increase your chance of a critical su success when you use a tag skill. Each D20 that rolls equal or under the skill rank is a critical success, scoring two successes instead of just one. All right, so here's an example. Curry is healing her injured companion and her medical skill is one of her tag skills. She attempts an intelligence plus medicine test with an intelligence of seven and a medicine of rank three. For a target number of 10, she rolls a 3 and a 14. The result, 14, doesn't generate a success, but a d20 roll that rolled the 3 generates two successes because it is equal to or under her rank in medicine and its tag skill. Derived statistics. So carrying weight is a derived statistic. Uh, your carry weight measures how much gear you can carry. You can carry a base of 150 pounds of equipment plus your strength attribute modified by 10. You can carry more by using perks, increasing your strength attribute and using equipment with extra carrying space. If you carry more gear than your carry weight allows, you suffer a number of penalties or you're over encumbered. And I'm not gonna go into a huge amount of detail there. Initiative is another derived skill. It is equal to your perception plus agility minus any penalties uh, for being over encumbered. Um, and again, it's a derived skill. So you're not rolling initiative. You have an initiative score. Um, and that is the uh, that is the order that you will go into. Defense is also derived, and it is agility um, one through eight. Your defense is a one. Agility nine plus your defense is two. All right, so um, it is based on your agility um, attribute score. Damage resistance. Your resistance is different type of damages is determined by your equipment and your perks. Damage resistant is subtracted from damage inflicted of that same type before it reduces your health. Physical damage resistance reduces physical damage. Radiation damage reduces radiation damage, etc. All right. Um, your health points are also derived. Your starting maximum health points are determined by adding together your endurance and your luck scores. Your health points deplete as you suffer damage and generally show how far you are from death. 
melee damage or melee damage statistic lists any bonus uh, damage you do with melee weapons or unarmed attacks due to having a high strength attribute. You add the number of bonus combat dice listed to your melee damage rolls. So if you have a strength attribute of seven or eight, you will have a plus one damage die. If you have a nine through 10 plus two damage die and an 11 plus plus three damage die. Perks, there are uh, special bonuses that uh, you can obtain to boost your character's special ability attributes, skill, give them a minor unique, uh, I'm sorry, a unique edge or even a brand new ability. Perks are often tied to special attributes or skills, enhancing them or providing you with a total, a totally new ability in the specific circumstances. Character advancement uh, it uses uh, experience points. All right. Um, the GM may award you an increase in level instead of XP during milestone progression. Your GM will tell you when you gain a level depending on your accomplishments leveling. This way it is led by the story rather than gameplay. So you can use either experience points based or milestone progression. Um, I kind of like to do a combination of it where you're gaining experience and then you get a session bonus for, um, you know, basically for, for showing up and participating. Uh, so um, it's not just showing up and sitting there, you know, and rolling dice when you're told to. It's, it's a bonus based on uh, role play, um, you know, having ingenuity in the use of your skills and so on. So it is uh, basically a bonus on good gameplay. And I like to award that basically per hour of play. You know, so, um, you know, a base amount would be something like 100 points per hour of play, uh, which is, you know, basically going to move the characters up um, from first, you know, from first level, you know, potentially to, you know, second level or so if I was um, doing one session. And actually looking at the experience point thing here again um, and thinking about that, um, that would be very fast. So it'd be, it would have to be much less uh, per session. So maybe, um, maybe even 10 points per hour uh, would be a little bit more appropriate because that will uh, have you leveling up way, way too fast. So big difference between Dungeons and Dragons and this. Um, so character creation, you're going to choose your origin. All right. And origin is uh, you could start off as a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. You could start off as a ghoul. You could start off as a super mutant, a Mr. Handy, which is a robot, a survivor, which is somebody usually on the outside of a vault and a vault dweller. Um, and based on your campaign and, and how you're having the player start off, you might limit this list or even expand upon it. Um, I'm leaning towards limiting this list uh, in my own campaign for uh, to vault, uh, vault dweller, Mr. Handy, and ghouls. And there's a very specific reason why ghouls are a starting um, background or origin in my, uh, you know, in my campaign. Uh, increase special attributes. Each attribute starts with a rank of five. Spend five points across your seven attributes to increase them to a maximum of 10 each. You can reduce any attribute from five to four to gain one point to spend an increase in another attribute. Remember the the 10 maximum at character creation uh, still applies even with that being done. Tag skills and buy skill ranks. Choose three tag skills, add two ranks to each tag skill, then spend nine plus intelligence points to increase your skill ranks. Each skill starts with a zero. Choose your first perk. 
Calculate your derived statistics. Choose your starting equipment, select, select starting equipment pack based on your origin, a trinket, and gain tag scale equipment. All right, um, and we'll go through all of these. And I already just did a summary of each of these, uh, so I'm not going to go into detail uh, of these. I know I have uh, ghouls in, uh, you know, in my starting adventure today, and we'll go into uh, some details with them when they do arrive. And um, so I have at least one ghoul and a vault dweller, which we will go through details. Um, there is a third player who I believe is uh, also a vault dweller, so it might have, uh, and then another that might come on that's going to be a ghoul. So of four players, I think we have uh, two vault dwellers and two ghouls, so that'll work. Um, choosing the perks, and uh, so here are the perks that they can choose from. We have action boy or girl. When you spend AP to take an additional major action, you do not suffer the increased skill test difficulty during your second action. Adamantine Skeleton, Adrenaline Rush, Animal Friend, Aqua Boy or Aqua Girl, um, Water is your ally, rank one, you no longer take radiation damage from swimming in irradiated water, Awareness, Barbarian, Armorer, Basher, um, when you, when you make a melee attack by bashing with your gun, your attack gains the vicious damage effect. Um, all of these are direct copies from Fallout 4, all right, the, uh, the computer game. So uh, it really is amazing how much um, Modiphius has taken from uh, Bethesda's game and and just put it to paper um so with, with like seamlessly so so playing the tabletop role-playing game is going to be mechanically identical to um or at least in in the feel identical feel i should say to uh playing the video game you're just adding in um the randomness of dice rolls and the uh, which you might not notice in the computer game because they're behind the scenes like you don't always hit or or whatnot so there is dice rolling in a computer game you just don't realize it and then there is uh you know the added um cooperative play that you're getting from a tabletop role-playing game that you don't get from a solo um computer rpg And going through, so there is a load of different um, different perks that you can take. Uh, they are they are basically spread across the different attribute areas uh, that you can also have. And so uh, you end up creating a character concept in making all of these choices, which is uh, which is really cool. Um, so again, it's very similar to the computer game where you're developing a character concept over the time. And, um, now we get to the derived statistics, which I already went through in, in some detail <coughs> and choosing your equipment. I did not, uh, go into much detail, but it tells you here like um, it goes to Mr. Handy, right? So that's something that a player in my campaign can start out as. And then the different types of Mr. Handys will give them different types of equipment. So if they go with the, um, if they go with the primary one, right? The, the most common domestic models of Mr. Handy, they will have one pier, uh, pincer arm attachment, one flamer arm attachment and one saw arm attachment. They have a standard plating robot repair kit, integral boiler mod, 
and 10 caps. That's 10 starting uh, coins uh, for currency. Uh, we have uh, Vault Dwellers. So uh, Vault Dwellers will start off with a jumpsuit, a Vault Tech branded canteen containing one purified water, a Pip Boy, a switchblade, a 10 millimeter pistol with six plus three rounds of uh, uh, pistol uh, ammunition, sorry, two stim packs and 10 caps. If they're Vault Tech security, then um, they will have a jumpsuit, a security armor, a security helmet, Vault Tech branded canteen containing one purified water, a Pip Boy, a baton, 10 millimeter pistol with uh, eight plus four rounds. Um, so I don't know why they say plus four, plus four rounds. It should just be um, 12. <laughs> and then uh, one stim pack. Oh, plus four, you, you're going to roll this die and see how many extra rounds you'll get. Uh, so four die rolls to see you might have even more than just the eight. I see that how that works now. Um, trader, personality, wanderer. We didn't get the ghoul. Um, starting... weird. Uh, Ghoul didn't have a starting uh, starting pack of equipment. So I'll look into that. And then we get into equipment. So um, tag skills. Again, it goes into items gained from tag skills. So if you have certain tag skills, you will gain these items along with them as well. Um, and then starting equipment at higher levels. So if you're starting at higher level, then you can incorporate this here, which is a really nice touch. That's usually not something that, um, you know, the, the game master is just left to settle it up. I got to see why there isn't a starter, uh, a starting uh, equipment for a ghoul here. Um, I know it said ghouls on uh, a certain page to uh, check out so maybe they come later on in the uh, character creation selection but anyway so I'll switch views again so that's pretty much a, an overview of uh, character creation um, really kind of simple system uh, shouldn't take very long I'm actually going to be running through this uh, later on today from from 12 noon to about 2.30 p.m. Eastern time with my group. Uh, so very excited to see how this goes. And uh, we'll probably just be doing a session zero. And um, because I know at least one player, uh, if not two, have to completely create their characters. So um, it'll be a good time to, um, to lay down the groundwork for, uh, for the campaign which will certainly go into its first full session of gameplay next week on Thursday. So um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. And uh, as always, please remember to subscribe and hit the alert button and uh, leave your comments in the comments section. Uh, and like I said, hopefully this goes and just posts, you know, right away. Uh, and doesn't take, uh, like I said, 12 to 24 hours to actually upload um, but, uh, I'm hoping that it's ready for my players to actually view, uh, in less than three hours. So you'll have a great one and thanks for stopping in. Take care.